Okay, good evening. Thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Simon Pirani, and uh, welcome to the first in our series of talks about the Russian Revolution. They'll take place usually on the last Thursday of each month over the next year to coincide with the centenary of the revolution in 2017. So a couple of things before we start. Uh, first, we've received quite a few emails from places as far afield as Brazil, South Africa, asking us to record the talks and put them online. So that's why we're recording. Um, we're very pleased about this. Um, and that brings me to the second point, which is please uh, switch off your mobile phones or put them on silent. Um, so to introduce the series, the talks are named Social Histories of the Russian Revolution, and that means we'll be discussing how the revolution was experienced by the mass of working people, women and men who participated. We don't intend to brush aside or ignore the role of political leaders and their disputes, their decisions, but we hope to move beyond the debate on those subjects, which are comparatively well known, to think about how millions of people participated in changing history. Because as much about this subject, which after all is probably one way of defining what a revolution is, that many of us know far too little about. Okay, second, the talks are not... Uh, in the original version of this note, these notes, I put the talks are not academic seminars. And I showed them to a friend who said, well, we're going to be sitting in a lecture theatre and somebody's going to talk for half an hour and then we're going to have questions and discussion. So then I put... They're not academic seminars in the usual sense. <laughs> uh, what we hope to do is to bring university-based historians who've spent years studying the revolution to speak with a wider audience about what they've learned, what they think the significance of it is, and to, to create a space for discussion between those historians and a wider non-academic spectrum of people. And, I mean, looking around the room, I'd say we've... Uh, at least got the potential for doing that, uh, and that's very good. Um, so I want to say a quick word about our list of speakers. Um, the, the, by the way, the program for the whole uh, series, which go on until next year, is up at the back in sort of leaflet form. Uh, Brendan's holding it up just there, and uh, it's online, Social Histories 1917, just like that. So it'll come up. Um, I think anyone who's familiar with the international picture of historians currently writing about the Russian Revolution will agree that we've managed to get 12 of the very, very best. Some have been working just longer than others, but all have published widely read uh, and well-reviewed research on the things they're talking about. So people who've, who've really put a lot of work into finding out about what happened. In the course of the year, we'll cover the events of 1917 of, and of the Civil War, and we'll look at some aspects of the social history of the Soviet Union in the, early, in the 1920s and the early 1930s. We'll look at the part played by women in the revolution. We'll look at the part played by industrial workers, of peasants, and of these social groups not only in Russia, but in the other nationalities that were ruled by the Russian Empire. We have a session on the history of those who attempted to reinvent lifestyles in the early Soviet period with uh, communes uh, based in houses. Um, we'll look at the activities of the radical right wing uh, and of anti-Semitism and of how these uh, were fought against in the course of the revolutionary events. Um, we hope that you'll all come back uh, to future uh, meetings in the series and we'll continue to use Eventbrite to work out the likely attendance, so that was really useful. Uh, we started off with a room that uh, uh, fitted, fits 40 people, and when you all kindly used Eventbrite to tell us you were coming, we got this room, so uh, we'll try to make sure we get rooms that are big enough. Um, so just a few words about how the series have been organised. We, the organising group, are friends who've all been active in various types of social movements and labour movements, and are interested in ideas about changing the world, particularly communist ideas. Some of us work or have worked in universities, but no, none of us are doing this as part of our job. We're working on a zero budget in the best tradition of uh, social and labour movements. Um, 
So you may ask, how have we got speakers coming from so far afield? We're very pleased that we've got uh, two speakers uh, coming next year, uh, Wendy Goldman and uh, Barbara Allen from the USA, and they've been able to, uh, and I think this probably says something about the way American academia is funded compared to universities in this country, they've managed to arrange things in such a way as they've got a research trip and they're going to stop off with us uh, on the way to do their research. But we do have some uh, of the speakers coming from places in Europe uh, who need help with their airfares. And for this purpose, uh, we have a Russian hat. Uh, William, if you can just hold that up. Um, and uh, that Russian hat will go around in the course of the evening. And uh, if you wish to contribute to make our zero budget a little more than zero, that would be fantastic. Uh, and the money will be used for airfares, nothing else. Right, so uh, moving on to this evening, uh, any, any questions or anything about? Yes? That's the hashtag. That's a hashtag, for those of you who know uh, what the significance of that is. <laughs> right. Um, this evening's discussion, okay. Uh, the timetable is uh, Steve Smith will speak for around half an hour. We'll then have at least another hour for questions, discussion, and for his further comments. Uh, when we put the series together, we didn't expect this number of people to turn up, and organizing a discussion with this many is not easy. So what I'm going to do is chair. Um, if you've been to lots of meetings uh, about this kind of thing, and uh, means quite possibly you know me, you might have seen me there, uh, if I ignore you, I'm not ignoring you, but I want to prioritize people who uh, haven't participated in discussions like this before, so if I think you're somebody like that and you've got your hand up, I shall come to you first. And, uh, you know, please don't think uh, your questions are not uh, worthy of this audience. If it sounds like jargon to you, or if you don't understand something, there's probably other people also who, to whom it sounds like jargon and to whom it doesn't make sense. So just ask, um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, have plenty for discussion and so on. At the end, we'll take a few minutes, as uh, we do in uh, labor movement meetings, uh, for anyone to announce any other relevant meeting, demonstration, whatever. Uh, and after that, uh, we, the organizers, will be going to the Institute of Education bar, which is nice and spacious, and would certainly have room for all here who want to join us, and we can continue the discussion there, also in the best tradition of uh, the Labour movement. Right. Um, okay, so uh, our speaker tonight, uh, Steve Smith, if we look at the work done in the UK uh, on the social history of the Russian Revolution over the last 40 years, there's absolutely no one uh, who's done more to push it forward uh, than Steve Smith, so we're really pleased he's come uh, to open the series uh, with us tonight. Uh, his first book, Red Petrograd, Revolution in the Factories, uh, was published in 1983. Uh, it was a groundbreaking study of the activities of factory committees in 1917 and 18. His other books on the Russian Revolution include The Russian Revolution, a very short introduction, uh, published in 2002, and a new history of the Russian Revolution that will be published in, uh, in next year, in February, uh, by Oxford University Press to uh, coincide with the centenary. Steve's also studied and written two books about the history of the Chinese Revolution in the 1920s and written a book of comparative history, Revolution and the People in Russia and China. And he was also the editor of the Oxford Handbook of the History of Communism. So, as I said, we're really uh, thrilled he's uh, 